Amazing viewers and subscribers and welcome to Poor Who, the channel where you get to see a fan obsess over his favourite TV show and of course over his favourite universe of Doctor Who. And for this video I've kind of been talking to quite a few people over the last couple of weeks. What am I looking forward to? Joys to the World or the War Games in Colour? And I kind of want to pull it out there more than ever. I'm more looking forward to the War Games in Colour. So this is video is basically why I'm looking forward to the War Games in Colour and mainly what I'm excited for and basically what stories I would like to see get the colorized treatment of 60s Doctor Who stories. So since basically last year, 20, 2023, we had the colorization of the Daleks, a fantastic story from the first season of Doctor Who. And the fact we're going from a story from season one, we're going to a story from season six. And of course it's the final story for the second Doctor. It's also the final story of the 1960s in general. Now, the one thing I wanna talk about is why I'm looking forward to this being colorized. Why I've got big hopes for this one. So, I thought basically the Daleks would have been a one-off. I really did. And I did a video basically saying that I think the War Games is next and that was around about March. And I'm glad I'm right. I'm glad that article I read was right that the War Games is next. And I kind of got a feeling we are definitely gonna get more. So I think in 2025, we will be getting another colorization of a 60s Doctor Who story around about November, December time. So the fact I'm quite looking forward to the War Games in colour and I just cannot hold in my excitement because I absolutely loved it. Now, I love the Daleks in colour. I know some people hated it. Some people hate the music that they used, that the fact it was over the voices of the Daleks. You can't really hear what the Daleks are saying. But the thing is, though, I've had basically a fantastic group of people saying to me oh i love the daleks in color the daleks in color it is a great way to introduce us to a 60 story for, for a brand new audience because i was talking to quite a few people at comic con over the weekend and they were like saying oh we can, we're in the middle of watching john pertwee and i went oh have you already watched william hartnell and patrick Trent? And they're like no we skipped them i'm like why because we can't watch it in black and white and i'm sorry but we can't watch black and white it's too it make it's too like different to TV nowadays, and even when you watch the seventies stuff, it's still different from TV nowadays. So I get where they're kind of coming from, but for me, being brought up with classic Who, being brought up with the sixties, seventies, and eighties, it makes no difference to me. But to somebody that has basically watched it from Christopher Eccleston all the way up to Shkatwa, and they're like going, "Yeah, we gotta go back. We gotta go back and watch classic Doctors." I can get where they're coming from. So the Daleks coming out in colour, it's one way for fans to go, I love this story, I want to see more, I really want to see more dark Doctor Who stories in colour. And the Daleks worked, I really think the Daleks did work for that because I've done a review on it and gave it such a good positive review and I basically watched it basically back on the 23rd of November when it was basically released on BBC4 last year. So I kind of watched it for its first anniversary of the Daleks being in colour. And the fact that day is literally like, oh, the War Games is coming out. The War Games is coming out. Yay, we got the War Games. I'm actually quite looking forward to it. The War Games, to me, it is a good story. It is a good finale story. The thing is about the War Games, it does drag from mainly like little bits of part three up to part nine with the Doctor, Jamie Zoe, basically getting captured, escaping, getting captured again, escaping and then captured again and escaping. And of course, it all leads to the second Doctor having to call the Time Lords for help because of the War Chief, who is also a Time Lord. So the story itself, it introduces us to the Time Lords for the first time. So the Doctor's name drop as a Time Lord is actually in this very first story, which is kind of fitting for it to be the last story of the 60s, and it's absolutely brilliant. Now, the fact that I asked a YouTuber, aka the, conf the Confused Dial, or the Convention Dial, something like that, and I've seen his basically two works on two regenerations. He's done a regeneration from the second Doctor to the third Doctor, and of course he's done a regeneration from the sixth Doctor to the seventh Doctor. I kind of wish when they brought out season 24, they would have said, look, can we use your clips and add it into basically Time and the Rani? I would have loved to see that version added on to Time of the Rani, or if they ever get to release an animation of the Blink of Death from the Six Doctor Adventures, the Lost, sorry, the Six Doctor's Last Adventures. I would love to see that animated and basically go from animation into that scene, into that video, basically seeing the Six Doctor regenerate into seven would absolutely be absolutely perfect, I think. 
But on Quiet Looking Forward to the Regeneration, yes, it does kind of knock out the whole Season 6B theory that's basically been going on since the 1985 story, a.k.a. The Two Doctors. But for me, I'm actually quite looking forward to it because, one, we finally, after, what, 55 years, we get to see the regeneration between the second and the third Doctor, considering that basically when the War Games finished filming, John Poe wasn't even cast to be the next Doctor, so Patrick Troughton's basically regeneration was kind of open closed which is something i'm like yeah you know what i don't mind i i love it because i really love the transition and the fact we are literally going from the war games and i kind of got a very strong feeling and i'm definitely thinking it's 100 percent right that the next collection box set is going to be season seven i i again i could be 100 percent wrong on this one but i kind of have a strange feeling Season 7 might be the next one to come out in the collection range. I could be 100% right, I could be 100% wrong, but again, I'm not the only one. Another sci-fi guy thinks it's Season 7, and I'm actually quite looking forward to it. If it is Season 7, I'm hoping what they're going to do with it, because one story of it has already been released in Fantastic HD, which is basically the spare from space, which I did a video about. So I honestly think, yeah, Season 7 might be next after, basically, we get the rock, the colorization of the war games now the war games itself it is a very strong regeneration story it's not as strong as like the caves of andrasani or the Gopoles or that's really it really for strong regeneration stories it's just those two Legopolis and the caves of andrasani the other regeneration stories are very very hit and miss i mean the 10th planet one's pretty good i do quite enjoy the 10th planet one Mm, Planet of the Spiders is good as well. So yeah, I think after basically... So basically you've got the 10th Planet, the War Games, Planet of the Spiders, Legopolis and the Case of Androsani are strong, strong regeneration stories. And then when you get to like Time and Irani, the TV movie, they, they kind of go yeah, a little bit funny. I know some people hate them. I quite enjoy them. I like the regenerations themselves. Then of course you've got where it goes back again with really, really strong with Partners in Crime. Not sorry, with... um. Bad Wolf and Part of the Ways, absolutely brilliant. And then it goes off again a little bit in a strange, funny little quadrantrum with The End of Time, The, the Time of the Doctor, tw Twice Upon a Time people didn't like, The Power of the Doctor when it went back up, and then the giggle just kind of went like that because of the whole bi generation. I know some people hated the whole bi generation thing. I personally didn't mind it. I know I'm sorry to say that, but I, I don't really mind the whole bi generation thing. As long as it's just like a one-off, that it's just like a one-off, and then when it comes to Gatwell leaving, we just see the effects we've been having since 2005, and up pops a new Doctor, and we get the fifth, the 16th Doctor. But the War Games itself is honestly a great story. I'm really looking forward to seeing it all colorized. I'm looking forward to seeing the War, the Warlords. I mean, the Warlords have been name dropped in Doctor Who quite a few times since the War Games, and like they were mentioned in Trial of a Time Lord. Which is like, oh, that's a nice callback to when they literally went to Theta Beta, uh, planet Fetus Beta, Sil's home planet. Because the Doctor mentioned that they picked up from the Warlords. Where, in my mind, that the Time Lords kind of trapped the Warlords and the home planet on in some sort of time bubble. Obviously, they escaped if they got mentioned in the Colin Baker era. But I do quite enjoy them. I'm really lucky. I do like the Warlords. The Warlords are quite villainous. And I love them, how they're kidnapping human beings. Setting them out of places in time and space. Well, by using fake TARDISes. Well, they like TARDISes, but kind of different. Because the War Chief invented them. And I do actually quite like it. Now, for a second Doctor story. I'm actually quite looking forward to seeing the whole trial in colorization where the doctor stands up the time lords oh he's too old oh he's too fat ain't he no that one's too young oh no one do it at all this is ridiculous and i'm really quite looking forward to him literally going while you have been observing the evil in the galaxy i have been fighting against it give me a fortune and i'll show you what i've been fighting uh, like fighting so i would love to see i'm really looking forward to seeing the, the clips with the daleks in color for the 60s i'm quite looking forward to seeing the Ice Warriors in that scene. I'm looking forward to seeing the Invasion of in, in that little clip. And I'm quite looking forward to seeing the Quark. So we, we will be seeing that fantastic shot. I'm really hoping that they don't get rid of that shot in the court scene with the Doctor showing them all the evils he's been fighting against. And of course, literally going, right, okay, you fight these. 
I'm really looking forward to seeing the Doctor say goodbye to Jamie and Zoe as well because in the 60 story they kind of get separated because of the whole like prison trap thing until Jamie and Zoe says look we want to see the Doctor you are very fond of him yes we've been through a lot of time I really love when the Doctor says goodbye to him he goes goodbye Jamie but Doctor goodbye Jamie and I really like his goodbye to Zoe when Zoe goes well I'll see you again now Zoe me and you both know that time is relative and I really like the way he literally just waves them goodbye like that. And he goes, they will forget me one day. Not entirely, Doctor. They will for they will remember their first year adventure with you, but nothing more. I really love that shot. Uh, so I'm really quite looking forward to seeing that scene in colour. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the scene where the Doctor stands up to the tunnels and then basically showing him what he's been fighting against. And I'm really looking forward to him seeing that, that fantastic. I'm really looking forward to seeing it in colour, the whole regeneration scene. Where he's there, and of course he's there talking. You're wasting time. Is this what this is what you can come up with? I've never seen such an exotic bunch. I really like it. I have the right to mind what I look like. It's very important. You have people the other. Me, you, you, you. Oh, what's happening? I'm really looking forward to seeing the whole bit where Trapton's face gets split into four. And he goes. No, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And of course, when you get the voiceover, the time has come for you to change your appearance, Doctor, and to begin your exile. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing that in Colour Rise. I'm really looking forward to seeing the whole court in trial. I'm really looking forward to seeing the warlords in Colour. There's just so much that I'm quite looking forward to seeing. I'm really looking forward to seeing the World War II setting, or the World War One setting in Colour. I'm looking forward to seeing the Scottish Revolution and the Roman Invasion. I'm quite looking forward to seeing all that. In colour, everything they had in the war games, such great storytelling. The only problem is it did drag. And the fact it's going from 10 parts, which is like 5 hours, to 90 minutes, which is like 1 hour and 20 minutes. 1 hour and 30 minutes, maybe. Yeah, 1 hour and 30 minutes. So it goes down from basically 5 hours to 1 hour and 90, uh, 30 minutes. I'm absolutely looking forward to it. I really am hyped about it. I'm really looking forward to it. Now... Joys to the Joys to the World, I'm quite looking forward to it as well. I'm looking forward to sitting down watching that Christmas special. I'm looking forward to seeing the dinosaurs. The trailer was released today for it, and I was going to review on it, but the only problem is when you've got the War Games, a classic Doctor Who story, Patrick Trotton's last story. So now I'm thinking, what do I need to look forward to? Trotton's last story being colorized, or should he get with second Christmas special? I'm looking forward to both. I am literally looking forward to them both, but I'm more looking forward and I'm being more pull towards the war games in colour i'm sorry to anybody if they're like but joys to the world is a brand new episode why are you looking forward to the war games because i love classic who classic who is honestly doctor who at its best and that's the thing about classic who if even if the bad stories suck and comparing the bad stories from, of classic who comparing them to the bad stories of modern who they actually do quite look interesting and so much better than some of the stuff we have in Modern Who. I'm sorry to say that, but yeah, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, you know what, Classic Who is literally the best. The bad stories are not that bad compared to some of the stuff we have in Modern Who. And you're probably going in your head, so what episodes are class to be Modern Who's worst? Which is basically Love of Monsters, Fear Hair. Then, of course, you've got the Lazarus Experiment, 42, the Dalek 2-parter from Series 3. Oh my god, Idiot's Lantern, New Earth. Then, of course, in Series 4, oh, I can't think of any bad episodes. But see, like, Let's Kill Hitler, The God Complex, you know. Then, of course, you've got Closing Time. Then, of course, you've got other episodes. They really do suck. Kill the Moon, The Forest of the Night, or as some people call it, Forest of the Shite. You know, it's very, very... Yeah, but Classic Who doesn't really have stuff like that. Yeah, okay, I'm not too fond of the mutants. I'm not too fond of the twin dilemma. But it is so much better. I mean, I'm literally going to say something positive about the twin dilemma. I can rewatch the twin dilemma. And yeah, okay, it's still my least favourite because of some of the stuff that they got Colin to do, like Attack Nicola Bryant, character Perry. But... It's still better than some of the stuff we've had in Modern Who, like the whole romantic stuff between Ten and Rose. And yeah, that stuff. It's still better than some of the stuff we have in Modern Who, which is why I'm going to say that the Twin Dilemma is one of the best stories of Doctor Who compared to some of the stuff we've had in Modern Who. If I do a video talking about basically Kill the Moon versus the Twin Dilemma, the Twin Dilemma definitely wins it. 
It's not the strongest classic Ooster. I mean, it's not like a masterpiece, but it still beats Kill the Bloody Moon. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to get that out of the way. But I'm really looking forward to the War Games. The War Games, it is just a powerful story. I cannot flipping wait for it. I just can't get my excitement out for it. I really want the next three weeks to hurry up. I'm literally sitting here going, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I want to see the War Games. I really want to see the War Games in colour. I'm literally like buzzing for it. I really am excited and more hyped for the War Games in colour. And I kind of want to talk about the stories I want to see colourised after the War Games as well. So... I think we are definitely going to get more. I think 2025, we are going to get another Hartnell story. I think it'd be interesting if we can alternate between a Hartnell and a Troughton. So last year, we had a Hartnell. So this year, we get a Troughton. I would love to see a Hartnell. So there's two stories that I would look kind of... Well, saying that's quite a few stories, like for Hartnell, let's see, colorized. So there's the Aztecs, the Keys of Marinus. I'll see that cut down. Because the Keys of Marinus, it's not my favourite story for season one, because I do find it a little bit draggy in some episodes. But... If it, they're going to colorize it, and I would love to see the fantastic planet set, the acid pool in color. I think I'll probably enjoy it more. I'm really looking forward to basically that if that ever happens. I would like to see the Keys of Marinus, the Dalek version of Earth. I would like to see the rescue. I'd like to see the Romans. I would love to see the Red Planet in color. And of course, the, the, the chase. The chase will be another good Dalek story to have in colorization. And even the, the Time Middler or the War Games. Not the War Games, the War Machines for Hartnell. And then for Troughton, any of his, any of his stories that exist, like Tomb of the Cybermen. Then, of course, like, Enemy of the World, The Web of Fear. Well, The Web of Fear, Episode 3 has been animated, but maybe they could basically colorize the rest of it. And then, of course, you could have The Dominators, The Mind Robber, The Croutons, The Seeds of Death. You know, there's an opportunity. I would love to see a lot of the existing stories to be colorized. I really would. I can't make my mind up what ones I really want next. I mean, if anything, I really want, like, probably the Dalek version of Earth next to be Hartnell's next one. And then, of course, for Trout, I would love to see Tomb of the Sunmen. Because, I mean, that his two Dalek stories are missing, but they have been animated and you can watch them on colour on DVD and Blu-ray. And, of course, they have been released on BBC iPlayer over here in the UK. So let me know in the comments, are you looking forward to the War Games? I am absolutely hyped for it. What do you think is going to be the next one to be colourised? Let me know. Please do like, subscribe and share. And join me for more awesome Doctor Who content on Paul Who. Absolutely have a fantastic day. You amazing viewers and subscribers.